Hey, June. How you doing? Hi, how are you? I'm okay. Eloise, how are you? Hey, hi, hi. Yeah. Elon, how are you? Looks like I don't. I just had the surgery on my skin. Oh, okay. And that's saying. why I didn't. That's why I didn't attend the earlier uh, meeting. Oh, okay. But I'll be list, I'll uh, shut my mouth and shut my camera and listen. Oh. Well, okay, but yeah, as long as you didn't fall on your head. <laughs> no, no, no. It no. was a schedule uh, with a guy and a knife. Oh, okay. All right. Well, yeah, I mean, these days you never know. It's like, you know, whoever you're uh, having to be locked up with in, in the house might have taken yeah. that out on you. <laughs> no, no. After she will take care of me, I <laughs> I don't participate in meetings anymore. Oh, okay. Well, that's... Oh, that's... so I'll be just listening. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to get started. Uh, we've got, oh, we've got a, about eight people here now. <clears throat> so I was going to open up, uh, you know, the drawings that I had pulled from this morning. And then June and Betty both sent me uh, some new drawings. So we'll be looking at those as well. Okay. So I'm going to get that up and on the screen. There we go. Okay. Everybody see that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this is a, a drawing that Betty sent me, and from what she told me about it, uh, she's just kind of getting started on this and then another piece that she's working on. These are in a, a fairly small sketchbook. Uh, what else can you tell me, tell me about it, Betty? Um, well, there's not a whole lot to tell except that, like you said, I'm... I, just getting to the point where I can start looking at values and um, trying to build those up. Um, that was just a uh, hat I had around and I thought it'd be interesting to try to draw it. Okay. So. And the light looks like it's coming from more or less behind it since it's casting a shadow toward us. Yeah, yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. All right. So I guess, you know, I guess I would expect that maybe the values on this side of the hat and the cast shadow and things would probably be darker than what you've got right, right now. But you know, you'll you'll develop those as you go along, I guess. Right. And and yeah, as you uh, as you work on it uh, and you get to different points in the drawing, uh, you know, feel free to share it with us. Let's let's take a look at the progress how you're going okay. along. Okay and how you're approaching it. Because everybody can learn a little something from watching somebody else, you know, develop their, uh, you know, develop their work, okay? Okay. Uh, this is another, now this, this was a, a cover for a Kleenex box, you said? Yeah, yeah, I had, a friend of mine had made those and she made me about two or three of them. Mm -hmm. And it's a cloth, um, cover that you put over the Kleenex boxes. And I thought it was just a really cute thing. So again, I thought it'd be good to draw it. And, um, you know, I got to work on values with it. Okay. Um, again, it looks like the light was coming from sort of behind it. Yeah. Um, you know, casting the shadow forward. So again, you know, I guess what I would expect would be that this plane, which is facing us, would, and mm -hmm. you you have a a little bit of tone in there now, but I'm kind of expecting it might actually be darker, and that these might be much lighter. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you've kind of got that indicated. I guess this is the chimney area right here. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, and then this is a Kleenex coming out of the chimney. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Um. So. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see you know where that goes. Uh, from this point. 
Um, moving on down the line here. Let's go to, oh. Ah. All right, this is a, a poster uh, that June sent and she did a drawing uh, more or less, you know, copying, you know, this. And let me show you the drawing here. There it is, okay. Now, my first comment is that, again, just, just like with the Degas piece, uh, be careful about your proportions, okay? Because her head, in comparison to her body, seems to be a little large, okay? And I'm just gonna, kind of, I'm gonna just kind of click back and forth between the two of them, so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. You got something going on in the background? Mute yourself. Um, okay. Can somebody mute themselves? Let's see here. I don't know who that is exactly. Um, okay. Anyway, um, yeah, the proportion of the head, you know, to the body seems to be, you know, a, a little bit exaggerated in your drawing and and then the other thing i would say is be careful you know when you start working with fabric um you seem to have a lot of like repetitive uh folds and things going around the arm and see these they're somewhat repetitive in there, um, but they've broken them up more and made them different proportions and, and sizes. And all of yours are kind of spaced out evenly. And anytime that you have an opportunity to take some of that away, mm -hmm. I would, yeah, I would do it. You, you know, only use the things that you absolutely have to put in to describe the shape or the form of that piece of fabric. Uh, and just because okay. you see three or four folds down there doesn't mean you have to put <laughs> three or four. You could do with maybe one or two, okay? And okay. Only, okay. only one or two that are different from each other. So you don't just keep repeating that same shape, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, and that that will kind of simplify and clean up the drawing a little bit. Still get the idea across, but it makes it a stronger drawing than if you try to copy mm -hmm. every little fold. Okay. All okay. Right. Uh, Thank you. So then we looked at this earlier. Okay. And what I was saying, we got real close to the end there was that when I'm looking up here at the actual object and then I'm looking at your drawing, it's like you could really push some of these values and get them much, much darker than you've got. And that would make the drawing much, you know, much stronger because yeah, you yeah. have more contrast, okay? Now, mm -hmm. I, don't, yeah. I don't know if it's because of the pencils that you're using, maybe, <laughs> maybe they're too hard, you can't get them dark enough but see if you can find a softer pencil maybe to come in and really push, you know, some of the shadows and the darks in there, okay? 6B is okay, 6B. Yeah, you should be able to do it with a 6B, okay? Okay, okay. Yeah, that, that, should, be, that should be soft enough. Uh, mm -hmm. if, if you had an ebony pencil, something like that, you know, those are, are pretty soft and you can get some good darks. It takes you a while, you gotta put a little pressure and you've got to go back over the area a couple of times. But, but you can get it really. The rush, right? Sometimes I have to rush. 
<laughs> yeah, you don't. Yeah, you don't have to be in a rush on any of this stuff. Okay, it's okay. it's more it's more about the end result than it is the time. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So let's. Thank see. you. Um, uh, I wanted to. Let's see. Is that about? I think that's just about everybody who sent in a drawing. Um, I wanted to share this, and I and I had sent. Uh, these to both June and to Eloise, and I don't know that Eloise is back uh, for this afternoon. Let's see who who else is here. Olga, one. Day. Yeah, okay. I'm back. Okay, she's there. <laughs> All right. Um, anyway, I sent a photo, not exactly from this act, uh -huh. but uh, I sent these very same eggshells to both uh -huh. June and to Eloise. Yeah. And I, yeah. I didn't see them. Oh, you didn't? Oh, okay. I didn't check. Okay. Well, I, I did send them to I you. I got it. Okay. Yeah. But thank you. The reason I sent this to you yeah. is I wanted you to look at the difference between the eggs, the white shelled eggs, and then the brown shelled eggs. And look at the difference in value. Okay. They're in the same light. And yet, because these have a darker surface, the basic color is darker. Yeah. Now, the values seem to be much darker, say in this area and along in here. You know, you get some really, really strong darks. In fact, you get stuff that's really close to almost black. And yet, on the white shells, you really don't ever get anything that's really close to black, right? So, right. The yeah. scale of value between the two of them is really pretty different, okay? And again, you know, that's that idea of local value. See, each one has its own range of value. These have a range of value. These have a range of value. Even though they're similar objects, they're the basic color of them is different, okay? One yeah. bit darker than the other. And then how that translates more or less in a drawing is some kind of like that. Okay. And so, you know, that's a quick little drawing I did this morning. Uh, of Thank you. Sitting on my little table out there on the porch. And, uh, you know, it should give you some idea. And this is in graphite. And uh, this was done with a heaven pencil. And, um, you know, again, you can get pretty dark with it. You can get really pretty close to black, you know, in there. You just have to put a little pressure on it and you have to keep building it up, okay? Okay. Right. Anybody got any Thank questions? You. Anybody got any questions about any of that? Anybody got any questions about anything we've talked about so far? Yes, Charles. Could you, could you show it on the tiling paper again? Can I show what it? If on, you, oh, the paper towel. Sure. Yeah, paper towel. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What if you use charcoal instead of pencil? Would that not help uh, with the? If she works in a hurry, a little faster than the pencil. Mm, no, not necessarily. Some people have a a, a lot of. Uh, a bit of a challenge, you know, controlling the charcoal because it's really, really easy to kind of spread around. <laughs> um, so, you know, graphite for some people works a little better because they have a little more control over those, uh, you know, over controlling the values and things. Um, so yeah, here, here was the original um, photo. No. That's not the one you showed us earlier, but I see the white is almost black. Yeah. But, but yeah. This one has shadow to it. Yeah, this mm -hmm. yeah, this one, yeah, this is not the one I sent you. Yeah, here it is. Ah, there we go. Yeah. So uh so yeah, this is not quite as dark. And again, the light isn't quite as intense as 
that other photo I just showed you. Uh, but again, you know, light is everything. You know, it it will it didn't the intensity of the light will determine how dark those shadows are. And so Okay. All right, Claudia, you you seen that? Yes. Okay. Because even the shadows on yes. the darker egg is darker than the shadows on the lighter egg shell. Right. Yeah. Yeah, a little. How, uh, how would the other picture be convincing for that white egg that has that looks almost black? How could you uh, convince oh. the viewer that that's a white, actually a white egg in shadow? Mm -hmm. Well, let's go down and take a look at it, okay? Since we've got it up here. Yeah, that's a that's a little different. Uh, there it is. Okay. And so when you look at that, that is really quite dark. And actually, when you look at the brown egg over here with the light. We can't see that one. Oh, you, you can't? Now. Okay. Yeah, that. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, they're all in the same yeah, group. Um, anyway, so the value over here gets really quite dark. And then when you go over here to the brown egg, which in the other shot was darker, again, because the light is hitting it, but you see it's almost like the light is coming through it and it's lighting up, you know, the, you know, the actual surface of the egg from the inside because it's somewhat translucent. So, but is that the camera that's making that egg, the white egg look that dark? I well, know it's in a shadow, uh, but it's extra no, it, dark. It's, yeah, it's, it's the sunlight. You know, it's, it's the actual sunlight and the angle that the light is hitting it. And yes, it is. It's, it's really very, very dark. In fact, it's, uh, well, this area, and then the shadow here. That. Yeah, they seem to be very similar in value. Well, out here seems to be pretty similar in value with this. It gets lighter as it comes in a little bit. And then this seems to be even, I don't know that it's really darker. Well, yeah, it is. It's slightly darker and cooler than this. This has a, a lot more warmth. <clears throat> warmth in the uh, in the color of it so but see that's why you have to really look at this stuff <laughs> and um, you know one of the problems in trying to draw from life you know like I was out there drawing this morning is I was drawing looking at the object and over time you know that light changed just within probably the 20 to 30 minutes that, you know, I was out there drawing, uh, you know, the intensity of the light and everything changed. Uh, and that's, that's a pretty common problem with trying to paint or work from life and be outdoors at the same time, uh, because the sunlight is always changing as it moves, uh, you know, it gets a little higher off of the horizon line. So, and here's a, there's another, can everybody see that? There's another shot of the very same thing. Slightly different angle, right? Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, from, you know, your point of view and the light, again, changes everything. Okay. So, uh, since, I, since, we're, now, since we're showing, uh, going, whoever's talking in the background, can we mute yourself, please? Um, okay. I'm going to show yeah. you a drawing that's pretty similar, different subject, okay? But now, this is a drawing that I did of my son many years ago. And, uh, you know, he was laying, you know, down on the floor and he had his little stuffed dinosaur with him and uh, you know the shadows were being cast from the window across him and you know pretty similar problem 
as far as, you know, getting the light and the shadow. And, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's a very fair skinned little child, but because of the sunlight, you know, you get very strong lights. And then on the shadow side, those tend to be, you know, pretty strong and pretty dark. Okay. Um, let's see what else can I show you. What was that done in? What medium? Uh, this was in Conte, Conte crayon. So it was a brown Conte. Yeah, here's another drawing. Now, I did this at the Cobb Marietta Museum, and this is about a 20 minute drawing, maybe. Um, I'm, I'm guessing it's about 20 minutes. And it was from a live uh, figure. They had a model, you know, sitting in forest. And so now this is in charcoal, and this is on newsprint, you know, which is pretty cheap, you know, drawing paper. But using charcoal and uh, the white chalk. You know, you can get a pretty, you know, a pretty strong dramatic effect with where the lights and the darks are. Uh, here's one that was done at the Atlanta Artist Center. Now, this is a 15 minute pose. And, you know, a young lady and she was up there posing. And this is in graphite and probably just on like a white bond paper in a sketchbook or something. And again, you know, just using the graphite, you can get some strong darks, you know, using, and this was all done with the same pencil. And so, you know, getting those strong darks in there, um, you know, you can use line versus tone. And a lot of this is just very loosely laid in tone, but then you can come back and, you know, emphasize, you know, the, the movement and the shape with these stronger lines. Now, particularly on the shadow side of the limbs uh, or the face, uh, you know, and that really kind of helps set up the movement and the kind of the flow of the drawing. Uh, here's a, another example of a drawing. And again, this is a, a graphite drawing and it's on a, it's on a, well, supposedly white piece of paper, but the light that this was shot under, you know, uh, was a bit warmer. So it has this kind of beigey sort of look, but it was actually just white paper. And, uh, this is a friend of mine, Jamie, and, uh, and my cat, who is no longer with us anymore, many years ago. Uh, and, you know, they were just sitting there on the couch and, you know, Jamie's, you know, hanging out reading a book. But again, you know, some use of tone, uh, a lot of use of just simplified line. And June, remember what I was saying about uh, the folds, you know, in the fabric? Mm -hmm. So again. Yes. See, I try not to make like a lot of repetitive folds. Yes. You know, there may have been more folds in that shirt, but, you know, I simplified it down to really just what I needed. Okay? Uh, yes. Um, uh, Charles, what yes. did you say you use for that? What I'm sorry, what? Me, did you use for that? It's a, it's a graphite pencil. Yeah. Yeah, kind of like an ebony pencil. Okay. Yeah. So you can get, again, you know, you can build up. Uh, I like ebony's. They're probably, you know, kind of equivalent to like about a 6B uh, as far as the hardness goes. But you can get pretty dark with them. So you can build up some good strong blacks. But you can also, if you use a little bit lighter pressure, you know, get a nice range of value out of it. And I would always try to use a softer pencil rather than a harder, uh, just because I think it's easier to work with and get those darks. And you just have to kind of lighten up on the pressure to get those lighter values and build it up a little bit. Um, let's see, what else can I show you? Oh, okay. Now this is a charcoal drawing. 
And uh, this was probably done, I'm guessing it was done on a piece of parchment paper or something that, that was kind of brownish in color. And I used that uh, with the charcoal and the white chalk, again, just to kind of emphasize and pull out, you know, the lights um, on the figure. And again, you know, look at the use of kind of strong line in places to emphasize the shapes and edges, uh, and then kind of softer tones to begin to build some of the sense of form and the volume in there. And also, I uh, want to talk to you a little bit about when you're drawing hair. Notice that I didn't move in the same direction, um, you know, with the hair. You know, I tried to kind of follow the form, you know, as it moved around the head, you know, the angle that I put that, uh, you know, pencil stroke down, you know, changed and moved. Same thing here you know, in the throat area, uh, a little bit in the cheekbone, forehead, things like that. Whatever plane that you're drawing, try to move with that. Now, down here, I didn't really want to emphasize any of that too much, so I just kind of took it and I laid it in at about a 45 degree angle. Uh, it doesn't show a lot of thought <laughs> in doing that, and if I had to do that drawing again, and uh, I had more time, I would probably spend more time trying to be conscientious of trying to follow the form uh, in laying in that tone. And it would have probably made the drawing better. Uh, there's a pretty good example. You know, again, you know, her, pretty much her whole face was in shadow and she was catching some highlight on the front plane um, and then some light on her back. But again, you know, trying to follow the form of the head as I lay in that hair, um, you know, and even here on the front plane of the face, again, trying to move, you know, with those shapes a little bit to try to describe, you know, more or less the direction of things. Um, All right, and then here's a little still life. And this is in graphite. And uh, again, you know, laying in just some of the value and, uh, you know, using the outline to sort of emphasize the edge of the shape, you know, the shape of the blocks. And then again, kind of moving with the direction of the plane or the form to try to describe what the surface of that is doing. So. And it really looks like wood, the blocks and the figure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, basically laid in a tone here and then put in some darker, you know, um, notes and used a kneaded eraser just to pull out, you know, some of these little edges, you know, the highlights in you know, wood always has sort of this, you know, darker and lighter pattern running through it with the grain. And uh, so, you know, laying in a general tone for the value and then pulling out some of the lights and then laying in some of the darks is a pretty effective way of getting that, that effect of wood grain in there. Okay. All right. Uh, so that's about all the, the drawings that I have to show you right at the moment. Um, I could show you, oh, okay. We're out to our last two minutes anyway. Um, go away. All right. Um, I want to show you two value studies, uh, that I did, and these are preliminaries for paintings and um, you can you could have either done this as a drawing uh, in this case you know I was just using oil paint and this was a, a portrait study 
uh, for this young woman. And uh, I was working on a, a toned canvas that was sort of this grayish tone in the background. And then I was building um, my darks in and then my lights over the top of those. And again, you know, being, you know, pretty conscientious about trying to look at the range of value, you know, in her skin tones versus the clothing that she was wearing and her hair. Um, and the better you can get at observing stuff like that and, and making, you know, those changes in value, uh, the better, you know, and the more form that will be present, you know, in the final piece of art. Okay. And then here's a, another example. And again, you know, this is, uh, you know, a value study, an underpainting. And so, uh, and this was a fairly large piece. It was about 60 inches tall. And, uh, and this painting actually ended up going to the Smithsonian, uh, to the uh, portrait gallery and hanging there for about two months in a show. Uh, not this piece, but the color piece after it. And uh, again, this was a preliminary step. So, you know, the more you get to know uh, the subject and what you're, what you're doing, kind of have a plan, um, the more successful you're going to be, you know, at creating, you know, a, a finished product. I saw that, Charles, the real, the live, the real one you're talking about. It's beautiful, too, and I still remember it Okay. at the Fulton County Annex that time. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, right it's now beautiful. it's actually hanging down at the uh, W Hotel. Uh, it's wow. part of the show, and uh, let's see. So you just started all over again to do the painting? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the underpainting is probably about half the size of the final painting. So it was, it was, I think, on like maybe about a 20 by 30 or something like that. And then uh, the final was about a 60, I think it was about a, probably about a 3660 was the final painting. It's more vertical, you know, slightly more vertical. But... Uh, Yeah, but yeah, from there I, I, I took and I did a, a complete, you know, colored painting from there and kind of, you know, repeated that whole process of going back in and because it was a traditional style painting. So I did the underpainting uh, and got it really just about to the same point and then started working with color glazes to begin to build up the color and just about... Uh, I'd say probably about 80% of the color that's in the final painting is actually all built up with just glazes. So they're all transparent layers of color. Okay. Gerald, Gerald when, yeah. you do a, when you do an underpainting and then you do the, uh, the original painting that you're going to, the final painting that you're going to do, do you kind of make any changes at that point under, under the second underpainting? Yeah, you could. Yeah, if, if there's things that you wanted to correct at that point, yeah, mm -hmm. you would definitely go back in and that's the time to make the changes. Uh, okay. You know, when you go back in that final underpainting, mm -hmm. um, you know, the preliminary is really just there to begin to figure it out, see where the values are, you know, figure out the composition. Uh, and once you have that to a point where you're fairly certain you know, that you want to move forward with the finish, then you get into the finish. And, you know, if there's things that you had seen that you wanted to change, that's the time to change it. Uh, because that whole underpainting acts as an anchor, uh, you know, for the comp, you know, basically you're solving value and composition when you're doing the underpainting. And then when you get to, uh, you know, the point where you're doing, the actual color, all of that's resolved. You're just trying to build up the color and the richness and, and the change in value um, and temperature. 
Do you do the underpainting in oil or acrylic? Uh, that was done in oil. The whole thing was done in oil. Uh, and uh, the underpainting was done in like a, a raw umber and white. So it has this kind of grayish tone to it. Um, and so you build up a whole range of value, you know, in, in the, the underpainting itself. And then when you're working with the color, you don't have to struggle with value anymore because it's already there. And you're using, uh, like I said, for the most part, you're using transparent color at that point. Anybody got any, any comments, anything they want to say? We got three minutes and 40 seconds left before Zoom cuts us all off again. What do you think about my bird in the tree? I want to talk about that. Uh, I want to talk about it on either Monday or Wednesday. But yeah, you, uh, yeah, that was a that was a nice piece. Um, are you are you going to do more to it? I uh, wasn't planning on it. You think so? <laughs> I'm well, trying I to get again. I'm trying to get the the dominant foreground and the mm -hmm. diminutive, diminishing backgrounds that I'm attempting. Okay. All right. Well, again, you know, we'll talk about that um, probably. Yeah, I'll I'll probably talk about it on Monday, but I'll I'll probably save it for Wednesday as well, since that's a, you know, we're talking about painting and painting techniques. Uh, you know, as far as drawing, you know, you have the same challenge. Uh, you know, how do you right? And that's what I was right. Yeah. How do you control your values, and then? hard and soft you know is the shape a hard outline shape or is it a soft shape and a lot of times the blurrier and sort of softer it is the more it's going to recede okay good all right um with that we're down to two minutes so before everybody goes away i'd like to just say thanks for showing up it's been good seeing all of you. Uh, stay safe, stay well, uh, stay inside <laughs> as much as possible. Okay. And um, again, you know, that email address, uh, send me some things. Um, you know, any, anything that you're working on, uh, any new ideas. Um, and, you know, like particularly for like the Monday class, you know, it could be anything. Um, again, it could be something that you did. It could also be something that you saw, uh, whether that's, you know, a film, you know, uh, another piece of artwork, a piece of music, you know, whatever sort of inspires you, okay? Could you repeat your uh, email address? Yeah, it's C, it's Charles dot Scoggins, S C O G I N S, at Fulton County, all spelled out, small case, small case letters, G A, and then dot gov, G O V. Thank you. Okay. Is this Wanda? Yes. Oh, okay. I haven't, I haven't met you yet. No, nope, you haven't. Not yet. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome. Um, thanks for joining us. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Glad to be here. All, all 14 of you who were here. Okay. So uh, we were, yeah, we're down to 12 now. Um, but anyway, thank you all for showing up. And thank you very much. Yeah, we'll see you all next week. Okay. Thank you, Charles. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. See ya. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Bye, Charles. Bye bye. 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 <laughs> okay.